Hello everyone and welcome to the 19th Hammer tutorial in the version 2 series. This tutorial will apply to all Source Engine games, but I will be using Portal 2 to complete this tutorial. Today we will be adding parents to items in our level. What a parent does is when you set a parent to an entity, that entity follows its parent's movement. Think of it as a child and parent relationship. When a parent goes to the mall, takes its child with it, and leads it around. So it's that same concept here. If a parent were to move side to side, if you have a child of that parent, it's going to move side to side in the same way. What I currently have set up is a funk move linear, which we covered in the previous tutorial. So this entity is just going to bounce back and forth endlessly so that we always have movement in our level to test our parenting. The first step to creating a parent is you need to give the parent a name. My parent's name is going to be platform. And now that this entity has a name, I can now parent things to it. You must have a name to be a parent. Now we're going to create a prop dynamic to be parented to this move linear. Press Shift E to select the entity tool and then change its class to prop dynamic. I'm going to search for a desk, verify that the prop can be used as a prop dynamic, click OK, then apply, and then put the prop somewhere. Now on that entity's properties, find the parent field, and then use the eyedropper tool and click the parent or type it in, and this parent is now set to be platform. So this desk is a child of the parent platform. Click apply, and close out of that. I'm going to compile and we can see what this looks like in game. Here we are in game. If we turn around, we see our platform, yep, there he is. Our platform is moving and the desk is moving with it. That's because the child is retaining the same movement as the parent, which this is exactly what we wanted to do. That is a basic child-parent relationship. And if we wanted to, we could actually give the child a name and then parent something to that child. So then we say we'd have a, a lamp parented to the desk, which is parented to the platform. You can have an infinite string of patterns. Do note that some entities like a funk move linear have issues when you parent a move linear to a move linear. There is some information on the VDC on how to work around this to achieve what you want to achieve. Now we're going to look at something called parent attachment points. An attachment point is a part on a model where you can actually parent something to a specific area on that model, and it will then move with that attachment point. This is usually used for, say, guns and grenades on Counter-Strike players' belts. If we open up the model browser by loading Model Viewer, we are presented with this tool. If you go to File, Load, and you can choose a model, I'm actually going to use the panel model from Portal 2, because these are what really, really take advantage of attachment points. This is how all those panels were created in Portal 2. So, looking at this model here, we see, if you've played Portal 2, you've seen this before, and there's usually a black or a white part on top of this. Now that's an attachment point. If we go to the Attachments tab, and we'll see Attachment, Panel underscore Attach. So definitely write down Panel underscore Attach and say Notepad. That's actually what we type in when we're parenting to an attachment point to get it to work. So I'm just going to save this for later. And when we select this attachment point, we'll see that little XYZ helper show up in our 3D view. That's the attachment point. You can verify that this attachment point will move with an animation by going to the sequence tab and just changing it to something. And we'll see that that little helper is actually moving and spinning with that arm. So this is how they get those brushes, which are black or white, on the front, which we're going to do now. I'm going to copy this desk and then change its model to arm. Once I have the arm selected, once it's in place, we're going to create a brush on top of it to represent that little brush panel that's on top. I'm going to texture it quickly. That's probably a little closer to what you see in Portal 2. Now we need to turn this brush into something that can be parented. The most common brush that you'll use for this is just simply called a function brush. So select it and press Control T to tie it to an entity and change its class to function brush. Once it's changed the function brush, 
what we need to do is assign a name to our panel arm. So I'm just going to name this arm. Now we need to give this arm model an animation. So we're going to set its default to be bind pose. What the bind pose does is that's the idle animation here. So find the idle animation if it has one, and then set that to the default animation. This will allow it so when we set the attachment point when the map begins, it won't be moved at all because the panel was animating. Sometimes you have some issues where the animation will move and then the attachment will take place, causing a little bit of space between the brush and the model. Now we need to assign the brush a name. I'm just going to call this panel, and we will set its parent to arm. Now, for an attachment point to work, it has to be done with a logic auto. This can't be done with a value set on the brush. So we're going to go to our logic auto over here. If you don't have one, just create one. And I'm going to add a new value. I'm going to target the panel on map spawn. We're going to set parent attachment maintain offset with a parameter override of panel underscore attach. Now basically what this is doing is we're telling the panel brush to set its parent attachment and maintain its offset, which means it's going to maintain its position in relation to the attachment point. If you do just set parent attachment, it's going to teleport. We'll do that value next. Hit apply and then close out. I'm going to compile and then we can see what this looks like in game. Here we are in game and we have our panel arm moving back and forth. I'm going to use ENT fire to have this panel start animating. So ENT fire arm set default animation. I'm going to do test anim. And there we go. It's animating and that brush is tied to that attachment point on the model. Now we're going to set an attachment point without maintaining the offset, meaning that the item is just going to snap in place. To do this best, we're going to use a turret. So I'm going to create another prop dynamic, and its world model is going to be turret. Here we go, NPC's turret. I'm going to parent him to our little moving platform, and I'm going to name him turret. Now I'm going to load up this model in my model browser so we can see what attachment points he has. So he's already got an animation going here, which is him shooting his guns. Going to go to attachments and we can see we have here's one left gun one muzzle and that's attached to his left gun muzzle I'm once again going to copy down what this is and we'll save that for a hammer now we'll give him an animation where he's firing that animation is just called fire there we go have that same animation and let's parent something ridiculous to it we're going to do prop, dynamic, world model. Let's parent a desk lamp to him, shall we? We're going to give the lamp a name of lamp. Its parent is going to be turret. And now we're going to use our logic auto once again. Add a new output. On map spawn, select the lamp, set parent attachment, and put in that value that we had earlier. I'm also going to create one other model here that we will also parent to his arm, but we're going to do that live in game. So we're going to parent two desk lamps to him, and it's going to look absolutely ridiculous. I'm going to compile, and we'll see what this looks like in game. Here we are in game, and we have our one lamp tied to this attachment point. Now you'll notice it spawned in a different location than where we placed it in the hammer. This is because when you use the set parent attachment, it actually teleports straight to the attachment point. And there's no way around that. If you wanted to go in relation to where it was spawned to the attachment point, that's when you use the maintain offset. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this lamp to use maintain offset, and then we're going to have it be a normal set attachment. So, I'm going to use ENT fire, ENT underscore fire, lamp two, set parent attachment maintain offset to the left gun muzzle. And we see it's now moving with an offset to that attachment point. 
So now I'm going to do without the maintain offset. So this is just going to be set parent attachment. And it just teleports over right there. Another thing about parents is that when a parent dies, it takes all of its children with it. I like to think because of starvation. So if I were to kill this turret with ENT fire turret kill, those two lamps are going to go with it. So the parents just packed up and moved away with their children. I'm going to kill the platform as well, and we'll see those other things disappear. And they're gone. So when a parent dies, it takes its children with it. I hope this tutorial has helped you create parents in your level to add a little bit more movement to objects, or just accomplish that complicated system that you've been working on. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have any issues with this tutorial, please use my contact information in the description to send me an email instead of posting a comment about it. Happy mapping.